If your hair lining is receding or your crown is thinning, you may wonder why this is happening and what exactly is causing your thinning hair. You may also be wondering what, if anything, you can do to reverse this trend. In India, some studies suggested that almost 85% of adult male population would suffer from pattern falling. Today we have Dr. Kaurav Krishna with us. Thank you so much for your advice and time. So, uh, so before we start, the main question that arises is that people are aware of male bodies. But still, uh, why is it a stigma and why is it happening so much in young generation these days? I think the numbers have been yes. towards the young generation. Why is that? So that's a very good question because male pattern hair loss has always been there. It's a genetic thing. But in this generation particularly, we are seeing that it's happening at least 10 years earlier than what it used to happen. And the most common reason is the lifestyle. Even if you see between urban, uh, urban areas versus rural areas, you know, it's more of a you know, urban problem. It's not that uh, people in villages do not get called, they do, but at a later age and lesser. So, lifestyle, which is your diet, pollution, stress, your sleep cycle, everything is playing a huge role. Also, as a species, as human beings, we are shifting, we are evolving towards more hairless bodies, hair being a vestigial organ. So, yes, that's also playing a role, but that of course happens slowly. But this sudden shift is primarily because of the lifestyle. Okay. So, when we talk about bodies, it does happen in females also, but it's comparatively it is more in males. Plus, uh, what are the causes for it? What are the reasons for it? So, you see, as we understand, is that male pattern hair loss is primarily male hormone driven testosterone and dihydrotestosterone. Because ladies have very less male hormone, it's not that they do not have, they have, but very less uh, amount of hormone, they do not get bald. You know, at a later age, you know, they may, the hair may thin out, and the mouth may broaden, but we do not see bald ladies, but we do see a lot of bald men. That's primarily because of the hormonal component that's going on. Okay, so some females have more hormones. Yes. You know, I think these days, these days, their hormones increases. Does that also can cause baldness in women? Yes, so there's a thing called female pattern hair loss, just like male pattern. So, uh, particularly ladies who have these sort of problems, which is very common now, they tend to lose more hair than a lady who does not have these sort of That's again hormonal. Uh, ladies, again, even in these sort they do not get like bald, bald. You know, uh, like in men, because still the hormone level is not to that level. Uh, but they experience massive hair shedding, they experience massive hair thinning, uh, uh, bad hair texture, which is manifested as thinner choti, the black, and the broadening of the mouth. So, this is commonly seen in ladies who have hormonal issues like this. Okay, so when we talk about the baldness, sometimes what happens is uh, since the starting also, every male in the family. Does have it? Is it hereditary genetic uh, the baldness? Yeah, that's that's the main reason. So it's not that uh, uh, people who are not bald, men who are not bald, do not have the hormone or less hormone. Hormone levels are the same, but it's the hormonal sensitivity, and that is a genetic trait. And that's why we see that baldness, hair loss runs in families. That does not mean that every male member has to be bald. It's a more of a probability. But in 90% of our male uh, pattern hair loss patients. There is affected family member, either from the paternal side, from the father's family, or the maternal side, from the mother's family. So, when we talk about wellness, there are a lot of things people are experimenting on their pregnancy. So, be it coloring, be it uh, smoothening, you know, a lot of hair treatments. Yes. Except, maybe, uh, I think, uh, you know, coloring, even mehndi lagana also comes under that. So, does that affect the wellness in males and females both? Either way, so you know, excessive use of chemicals or eating products, uh, you know, particularly that are used in straightening, rebonding, it damages the hair structure. It, it may not kill the hair root, but because in a person who has hair issues, the hair is already very thin, and when these hair are subjected to chemical-based treatment and not of heat, you know, heat heat-based treatments, then it leads to faster hair fall, faster breakage of these thin hair, and because the hair roots are thin. Their reversibility, the regrowth is also very slow. So, yes, it tends to act as an additional factor in accelerating your hair loss. Okay. So, 
So when we talk about uh, the baldness, so there must be a balance. Some people use their technology and there is a different term to call it baldness. So how do we diagnose that somebody who is losing hair is actually suffering from baldness or is just another thing? So again, that's a very good question because uh, many times, uh, you know, most of patients feel that the moment they start losing hair, they say that I'm going to get bald, which is not the case. So one thing is normal hair shedding, which is losing up to 100 hair in a day, is totally normal. That's the hair cycle. Hair will fall, hair will grow back. Even in things like telogen effluvium, like post COVID, monsoons, post fever, post stress, you will lose massive amounts of hair, like 300, 500 hair in a day. That's also not a problem. Now, how will you differentiate whether it's a normal hair loss or this hair loss may cause hair thinning and further baldness? So, there's a simple test that you can do at home. It's called the basin test. So, you just brush 10 to 15 times on wet hair and see the hair that is falling. If more than 20% of hair are thin and short, then you may be suffering from hair thinning and this may lead to baldness. And this is the time when you see a dermatologist. If, however, 95% plus hair that are falling, they may be excessive, but if 95% hair that are falling are thick and long, that is not a huge reason to worry because this is a normal hair shedding and you will regain those hair back in 3 to 4 months. So, basin test is something that you can do at home. Lots of thin hair, there is a problem. Very few thin hair, maximum long thick hair, no reason to worry. So, when we talk about baldness, uh, there are a lot of disorders One is I think alopecia yes. Is it a disorder or it's just a normal thing why you have a baldness? See, any any hair loss technically is alopecia Alopecia is a medical term which refers to any hair loss And there are so many types of alopecia So when we talk of male pattern hair loss It's called androgenic alopecia mm-hmm. Then when a person, when a patient tell us we have alopecia Most of the time it means a thing called alopecia areata where you have these coin shaped patches of complete baldness on the scalp. So that's a disease and that needs treatment. And uh, it's reversible, you know. You, you may have a complete bald patch, but with treatment, all the hairs come back. So, alopecia, in the general, uh, you know, as a layman term, in medical term, alopecia areata is a disease based hair loss which is totally treatable in most of the cases. When it is extensive, we call it totalis, then the treatment becomes a bit challenging. But 99% cases of alopecia areata are totally treatable. And that usually does not cause baldness. Androgenic alopecia, male pattern hair loss, ultimate fate is baldness. Okay. So when we talk about baldness, uh, what is the common age group these days? So we talked earlier that it has been shifted ten years earlier. So what is the most common age group which uh, you treat or you know commonly comes up to the doctor which has a complete age of baldness? See, a few years back it was mostly the fifth decade, forty plus. Okay. Now the third decade. 20 plus male, young male, is our main population group which is seeking treatment, which is having the problem and which is seeking treatment. Because, see, even in our society right now, losing hair after a certain age is acceptable in a male particularly. Yeah, yes. It's a common male trait. Yes. The problem happens when a 25 year old starts losing hair and you know, starts looking bald because uh, you know, it may cause uh, problems in confidence, it may cause many problems in the overall lifestyle of the patient. So, the maximum patient that is coming to me are you know, 25 to 35 uh, years age group. Interestingly, now the thing called pediatric male pattern hair loss has also been promoted and the youngest case is 9 year old or so. So, even in kids, and we are seeing lots of 12 to 17 year old kids who are experiencing hair thinning, not just hair fall, proper male pattern hair thinning. So much so that we are seeing even 18 years old getting bald and seeking hair transplant as a treatment. So the age is coming down with each, you know, with each passing year we are seeing more and more young group. But as of now, 25 to 35, that's the commonest age group that is coming. So when we talk about baldness and we talk about the treatments of it, and as you said that it might be reversible also. So what are the cases? In what extreme cases still is the point where it's reversible? So technically, uh, the acceptable point is 50% loss. Till the time you have lost 50% volume, things are totally treatable. Means that we may not go back to 100%, but we can reach 75 to 80% of the original hair thickness, which is good enough. Below that also, if you have hair roots, uh, like you have lost 40 or 60% volume, but you still have hair roots, things can get better. It may not reach 80%, but from 40%, we can bring it to 50, 55% or so. 
problems start happening primarily when you lose more than 50% hair growth then things become difficult and then we start thinking of more aggressive treatment options like hair transplant or so because just with medical treatment it may not be completely reversible so as of now 50% is the cut off so when we talk about baldness and in parallel we will talk about the lifestyle so as we have seen that even some celebrities they pretty much have better lifestyle in eating habits yes. or go exercise or a healthy way better than us but still lot of celebrities are there who's taking the treatments and who's who are actually suffering from baldness so what is like how does that uh, define the baldness okay, so see 90% role is the genetic factor the hormones which are beyond a person's control that's how the hair makeup is the hormone is normal for a male body and because they have the gene the rolling gene and that brings a thing called receptor on these hair mm -hmm. and uh, the hormone attaches to the hair follicle via the receptor and causes hair thinning mm -hmm. that is beyond your lifestyle so if you have rolling gene and you may have the best of the lifestyle you may have least of the stresses mm -hmm. best of the foods you will still lose hair but at a later age you may not lose hair at 25 you may lose hair at 40 45 vice mm -hmm. versa you have of the worst of lifestyles you smoke and cigarettes in a day you do not eat properly you do not exercise but you do not have the balding gene you may not get bald so 90% role is genetic you have that tendency which gets compounded by lifestyle we we'll talk about celebrities uh, who have good lifestyle also but they do not have control about their genes and they have inherited that so they lose hair and that is why many celebrities also are seeking hair loss treatments hair transplants things like that So when we talk about the treatments, what are the most common treatments uh, in which a person can get? Like no, not the whole, but at least the amount of hair which looks pretty much okay as a person. Because as we talk about the confidence, it automatically comes down. But when you talk about baldness, you might be treating a lot of people. So what are the common treatments we talk about in baldness? So there are I don't know. I can classify it into uh, medical treatments and home treatments. Okay. So medical treatment primarily are uh, in allopathy, which are used are DHT blockers. You know, there are medicines like finasteride, uvastride, which are prescription medicines, but they are very effective. Finasteride is FDA approved, uh, has a you know good role. It makes the hair thick. It has a side effect profile, so you can't take it lightly. You have to take it only under dermatologist supervision. But this is one of the most commonly used treatment. Second, very old and very commonly used is minoxidil. Almost everybody who has hair loss issue has heard of minoxidil. So minoxidil is again uh, another FDA approved treatment that uh, is weaker than a DHT blocker, but it does improve the hair quality. Newer treatments like PRP injections, platelet rich plasma, mesotherapy, even fat injections are used these days. Uh, laser therapy is called low level laser therapy. Uh, hair supplements like biotin, calcium pentothenate. These are also good add-ons to your main hair loss treatment. At home, what you can do, you know, things like onion juice. Um, few years back, we didn't believe it, but now even modern science believes that onion juice, onion extract, have certain role in balancing out the hair cycle and may promote the hair growth. Certain certain medicated oils, which have what we call irritants, may also increase blood flow and thus may give you better hair. Apart from that, proper good diet. Proper good diet means diet which is rich in proteins. Which is rich in minerals and vitamins, particularly vitamin A, vitamin E, vitamin C, uh, omega-3 fatty acids, and biotin. Biotin is the hair vitamin. So, good diet also takes you a long way in your hair loss journey. So, the treatment can be classified into home based, which we discussed, clinic based, which are medication, and clinic based treatments like PRP is as of now one of the very popular treatments. Uh, which is not the main treatment. I might add here, it is a good add-on to the main medicine. So when we talk about the treatments, and as you talked about the treatments, which is medical and home remedies. So when we talk about the medical treatments, so uh, I have seen a lot of cases, or we mean the ads. So when a person uses neem, if I'm right or wrong, I don't know. More than fifty percent of the hair. Uh, there are other options also that you guys you take the hair from the part of the body, and then you inject it. So, you know, so how does that work? Yeah, so uh, so that's called a hair transplant. Okay. So when an area gets bald, yeah. means it has lost 90% of its growth. Your hairline has receded, the forehead is looking broad. So this area has gone bald. So the medicines or the treatment that we talked about, they can't produce a root. Okay. So when we feel that uh, hair area has lost so much roots that just stimulating whatever is available is not good enough, mm -hmm. we do a hair transplant. 
which is taking out roots from other parts of the body, which are primarily back of the scalp, the beard, even chest and body hair can be used because these are the hair which are not affected by male hormone in a negative way. So we take out these roots and plant it or uh, you know transplant it on the bald areas. And these hair, these roots can sprout a hair and cover the scalp. So this is the hair transplant, which has become very popular in the last ten years because it. Is of course not life saving, but it is actually life changing in many people who are concerned about their hair loss because it does, if done properly, it does restores uh, the old look that uh, the person had. It's a minor surgical procedure, but uh, not risky uh, if done properly. Uh, it's a five to seven day care that is needed, and then you enjoy the results for a very long time. Uh, a disclaimer here is that a hair transplant gives you hair on bald areas, which remain. That area which we treat through a hair transplant does not get bald again, but it does not prevent further hair loss. For example, a person what we call grade three baldness has gone bald on the front, and we do a transplant there. That person, if everything has gone rightly, that person will not get bald on that area again, but he may get bald at the back areas. So for that, the person still needs medical treatment, ongoing medical treatment to prevent loss of the new, you know, to prevent balding of a new area. If God forbids a new area gets bald, then he has the option of doing a second transplant also. Sometimes even a third or a fourth transplant. But if any patients who start very, you know, transplant at a very early stage, uh, grade two, then they may need multiple transplants. But that's also possible. So hair transplant uh, has become very popular as a treatment because uh, now people are, uh, are people are aware that it's a result-oriented procedure, safe procedure, and the results are really you know, done properly, uh, really pleasing to the eye. So the hair transplant has become another very good modality in people where medical treatment is not working. Okay. So when we talk about the home remedies, uh, and we talk about the onion juice, so there are other home remedies like oil, like basic home remedies which should be followed for healthy hair growth. So there are two things. One is a healthy root. Yeah. Right? Healthy root is primarily your diet, stress, like uh, sleep cycle, mm -hmm. and once in a while you can use these irritants like onion juice, garlic juice. Uh, see, being an allopathic doctor, uh, I can, I mean, I'm not supposed to say this, but Ayurveda firmly believes, and we have seen patients who have seen some improvement with these things. So this is not useless, and uh, uh, it does make a role in strengthening your hair root. Oiling, on the other hand does not improve the hair root. It nourishes the external hair, we call it conditioning. So, of course, hair root is one part of your hair. The hair shaft, what you're seeing on the top, that's called the hair shaft, that's another part. And uh, with your chemical uh, products, with the pollution that you have, the sun, sun damage that the hair gets, it loses its shine, its luster. And hair oiling helps us there, it conditions the hair. So, first you avoid hot water baths. Hot water baths, strips, the natural oils. You should oil your hair once in a week or twice in a week depending on how dry your scalp is. Uh, what we, um, it's a cultural myth that oiling the hair very regularly prevents hair fall. It does not do that. It conditions the hair and that is enough if we do it 30 minutes before our hair wash. We don't need it to leave it overnight if we try that out. But uh, just 30 minutes of oiling before a head, uh, before a head bath uh, does maintain the hair health from outside. So oiling, be it a normal coconut oil, olive oil, almond oil, any kind of you know some kind of medicated oil, whatever whatever you like, everything is fine. But uh, oiling once in a week is a good practice. And uh, when we talk about the lifestyle, and uh, what are the basic healthy lifestyle one should follow? Either the person has the bonus or not, or the harmonic or not. What is the basic lifestyle nutrition? be kept inside the body for a proper hair growth in the body or you know everything. Yeah. So a couple of tips. First and foremost as I repeatedly say is the diet. You know, your hair is made of protein, keratin and your hair cycle pump is nutrition dependent. So proper diet rich in protein with the vitamins which you get from green leafy vegetables, you get from walnuts, you any you know if you are eating non veg the eggs Vegetarian diet is all kind of dal, chole, rajma, paneer. These things are good for your uh, for your hair diet wise. Sleep cycle has to be good. If you're sleeping too less, if you're sleeping very irregularly, then your body is under stress and produces cortisol. 
which is not good for your hair. Mm-hmm. So you see that during periods of extreme stress, it could be emotional stress, it could be work-related stress, exam or study-related stress, you lose a lot of hair. So stress does play a role, so reducing stress also takes you a long way. Exercise, uh, when you exercise properly, you are, uh, you know, there is enough blood flow going on, the muscles are active and you are in good health. When you are in good health, it shows on your hair and skin. Fourth is less experimentation. See, if you are using a uh, hair product like a gel, wax, keeping treatment like you know, ironing at home, it's all fine if you do it once in a while. But if you start with it too frequently, it damages your hair sharp and you know, that can lead to easy breakage, uh, split ends, etc., which is not good for your hair. Smoking, particularly, you know, even one stick uh, in a day, apart from affecting your lungs and body, it has a direct impact on your hair. So, you see, in a person who has no hair issues, it may not have a deep impact, but in a person who already has hair thin issues, smoking directly impacts your hair health. And it has been seen that smokers bald earlier than non smokers. Smokers show less response to medical treatment uh, than non smokers. So, smoking uh, is uh, really not good for your hair, and so you, know, you should quit smoking at least, uh, of course, for your lungs, but for your hair also. So, these are the various things. Uh, second is uh, using hot water bath, uh, particularly in Delhi winter we like using hot water but for hair it is not very good, it dries up the skin, so it gives you dandruff it also dries up your hair, so it leads to easy breakage uh, Many patients I have seen this of late that they say that uh, our water supply is very hard so we use mineral water See mineral water is not very good for your hair, it is still hard water So a normal tap water is more than enough, if you really have hard water in your supply you can use a water softener plant in, in the main supply in the tap. So, uh, hard water is not good for your hair. Mineral water is not a, not a substitute. You use soft water, and which can be done by just using water softening plants. Okay. So, as we talked about biotech, I'm not sure. How does that affect the direct flow? And if somebody has a low biotech in the body, uh, and I think it affects the growth of the nails also yes. and then the hair also if somebody has low biotech in the body so do, you, do we have like medicines uh, and you know medicines or uh, medications to increase that in the body and people who have low biotech also suffer from the problems yes so biotech is also called as vitamin H it's a very complex vitamin specific for vitamin H because it's particularly good for your hair a few years back, we used to give supra doses, 5 mg or 10 mg of biotin, which has shown it's still debatable. But uh, many patients do report an improvement in their hair health. If not hair growth, uh, they see an improvement in hair shine, hair texture, and better nails. So it definitely works, not to a great extent, but because it does not have any side effect. It's easily available. There are so many supplements now available in India which have good quality biotin. So it's worth taking. Uh, if you have hair issues, you know, my protocol is I give it for 3 months and then give a break and then maybe next year I can repeat it for 3 months it's not a mainstay treatment but if your diet is not good, you are deficient in biotin, you are not eating eggs uh, predominantly a vegetarian diet, uh, not even eating green leafy vegetables then using a biotin supplement does work and it's easily available over the counter X number of uh, brands are available, all are good enough uh, you can take a guidance for dermatologist to pick which is the best for you but yes, biotin does help. Still debatable, but because we have used, we have been using it since more than ten years now. Uh, we have not seen any side effect really, and in many patients, we do see a improvement in uh, hair health. So yes, it's a part of our discussion. Thank you so much, sir. It was a great session, and the message and the knowledge you conveyed to everybody. I hope you guys will see the doctor. If any male baldness or anyone who's suffering from it. You see it, you can just go and see your dermatologist, it doesn't harm you but of course it can help you in many ways. Thank you.